All right, so today I'm gonna do a you know long overdue and much requested build review and a little bit of a gameplay showcase for something that directly counters the shotgun metagame. Now, it's not a 100% complete counter. You can still die, but what it does is it protects you, you know, a giant amount from the shotguns. There's a lot of different mechanisms going into this build, and I think it's really functional, and I've started using it a lot more now. So if you don't like dying in one hit to shotguns, this can prevent that. It 100% it can. You have to use it correctly, and I'll go into, you know, the ins and outs of how to use it in a, in a second, but I can talk about the gear, talk about my weapons, I'll do my, my skills and my talents, and then I'll actually show some organized, you know, testing in the Dark Zone, and then some gameplay. The gameplay doesn't actually have me facing any shotguns, which is, you know, counterproductive to demonstrating the build, but I just want to say, whenever I'm looking for something in the game, it just seems like it never appears. So we fight some players, and it's actually a good demonstration of how the build performs, not only against shotguns, because, you know, in the organized demonstration with my buddy Jay Casher, you can see how well it performs against shotguns. It also shows that the build is viable against any other build as well. Uh, it's really functional. It's really fun. So what it's going to be using is four-piece Hunter's Faith. Now, up until this point, I've been told by people, and I've also thought myself, oh, Hunter's Faith is useless. But it's not. It's actually something. It's a hidden gem. And right now, with the shotguns you know, functioning the way that they are, Hunter's Faith is amazing. So I'm going to talk about all the Hunter's Faith pieces, then my Vigorous Chest, then my, my Sentry's Call Holster, and that's just because it's one of the best things I have in that slot. But you could be running something like you know Savage Gloves with the Vigorous Chest if you wanted to in four-piece Hunter's Faith. You could even swap out uh, Vigorous if you really wanted to, but I would advise against that. It's kind of you know integral to the build. So talking about the Hunter's Faith, I had this backpack. It has a really great firearms roll. It has critical hit damage. Now this is something that a lot of people may want to switch. Now I don't have skill power on either my mask or my backpack in this build which is something that a lot of people are going to want, and you should probably run with Booster Shot. Now, I don't have that, but at the same time, I think this is just as viable. I am not the healing character. In a squad, I'm not going to be the one dishing out the heals. Uh, that's our buddy, uh, Hoof. So, I don't really need that high skill power, but at the same time, if you are running solo or something like that, then definitely switch out the critical hit damage on your backpack and the critical hit chance on your mask for skill power. That'll put you right up to about 25, 26, 27,000, and then your booster shot will heal for a much bigger amount. You're going to have increased survivability. Your pulse is going to be more potent. So that's something you should do if you're going if you don't have an organized squad with individual rolls. But in my case, uh, running with this build, I am going to be dishing damage as well as mitigating damage, and the heals are going to come from a different location. So I'm okay with this. The the critical hit damage is a large chunk, and that's why I've chosen to have it on my backpack. Now. Uh, the great firearms roll with, with the critical hit damage makes this a good piece. First aid self-heal, fantastic roll there. And pulse duration, you know, fantastic roll there. So this is damn near perfect in terms of a backpack. Uh, helps me with survivability because even though my skill power is low, the first aid self-heal helps a lot. And the pulse duration is nice and pairs with my, you know, DPS burst mechanic. The bleed resistance, not that relevant, but it does help. Now, looking at the Hunter's Faith bonus really quickly before I talk about more, 20% Marksman Rifle critical hit. I am using a Marksman Rifle as my secondary, you know, uh, gun, so that does help and it is, you know, viable, but it's not something super critical. 20% uh, damage to elites I don't care about at all. And then hitting an enemy with a bullet grants you temporary armor. The further you're shot, the more armor. The armor disappears after one bullet hits you. I don't know the exact numbers on this, so if someone does, please post that down in the comments. But this is uh, this boosts you above the armor cap, uh, has been proven. And uh, it only works for the first bullet that hits the enemy. It doesn't work for consecutive bullets. So you can't shoot them five times and then get the bonus from all five bullets. Um, but what it does is if you're like three or four meters away, it's going to give you like three or four percentage of armor. Now, one thing that's important to note about armor is after 50%, armor becomes more and more helpful per percentage point. And after 75%, 1% uh, of armor is not equivalent to 1% of damage reduction. It's actually much, much, much greater. Uh, more damage reduced per percentage of armor. So even getting one or two or three or five or 10% armor is going to have a huge impact on, on the shotgun rounds. Now, since the sentry patch, shotgun pellets do not function as their each individual bullet. That's how sentry was stacking. As far as I know, you would shoot a shotgun round and all the different bullets func pellets functioned as their own bullets. And as a result of that, you could triple stack targets. They changed that. Shotgun rounds function as one bullet. And when they hit you, um, they, they hit as one unit. So the, the extra armor is going to mitigate damage from all of those pellets. It's going to mitigate the base damage. It's going to stop them from uh, scaling with critical, critical strikes and stuff. So it's actually really valuable. I've been getting a lot of feedback on Hunter's Faith, and I'm finally glad that I've covered it in uh, a way that you know, hopefully is helpful. So my stamina mod has skill power, you know, really potent. You can use whatever mods you want, but it's important to reach the armor cap and then to get as much skill power as possible. Moving down to my gloves. 
you can use gloves that have basically anything on them, but I would recommend the, the, the big three major attributes of weapon damage of your choice, critical hit chance, critical hit damage. That's great. Uh, and then uh, these have a decent firearms roll. Uh, a rule of thumb when looking at the rolls on main stats, 500s is bad. Uh, 600s, mid 600s is medium. You know, low 600s is bad, high 600s is okay. And then anything in the 700s is a good roll. So this is a medium roll on the higher end of medium, so it's okay. It's not that bad, uh, but it's not that great. Also, turret damage, not relevant to the build at all, so don't really need to talk about that. And then moving on to my mask. Like I said before, I don't have skill power on the mask. I have critical hit chance. You could re-roll this from a solo play perspective, and you could re-roll this if you just want to have your heal be more powerful or your pulse be more powerful. Now, I do have in the skill attributes pulse critical hit chance. That's nice. Anything augmenting pulse is going to be great for my build. Uh, so a, sol a solid mask all around, but it doesn't have skill power, so anyone that wants that you know, can go ahead and roll that. In the mod slot, I do have something with armor that's allowing me to achieve the 75% armor cap, which is critical right now with the shotgun meta being what it is. Now I'm going to talk about my pads. I have, you know, a decent stamina roll uh, following my rule of thumb. This is, you know, on the upper end of medium, which is nice. 21% critical hit damage. That's pairing very nicely with my MP7 that I'm going to be using. My SMG build, I have tons of critical, you know, hit damage. So when I am getting those crits, they're going to be very high and it's nice. Enemy armor damage is something I'm tentatively looking into as something I'll, I'll be, you know, building into more of my builds because they are going to implement uh, armor shred or armor penetration to PvP. I don't know when, I don't know how they're going to do it, but I believe that has been confirmed. If you have some contrary information, please post it in the comments. But that, as far as I know, that's a reality. Uh, nothing in the skill attributes that I want, so that's not very critical. Let's talk about my holster really quick. It's just the best holster that I have. Always roll armor in your holster in the major attribute slot. Always do that and then have the best, you know, main stat holster that you can. Pulse critical hit damage is really great, uh, pairs with the build nicely. So uh, this is just the best holster that I have. It could be anything. And then vigorous chest piece. Now this is important. Uh, you can switch it out if you really want to, but I think that this is really important for countering shotguns. Has a great stamina roll, has some EDR, helps me survive, has armor. Very important to roll armor as a major attribute on your chest piece. Has some ammo capacity and has pulse duration. So all around, I would consider this a perfect chest piece. It just doesn't have firearms. It has stamina, so that's why I don't swap it out for reckless sometimes. Uh, I have firearms with armor that, again, I needed two mods to achieve the armor cap, and then I have firearms with critical hit chance. That could be skill power. Both of them could be skill power. There's a lot of different ways that you can mod your gear, so that's up to, you know, the individual who's creating the build. This is the way I've chosen to do it, and I figured I'd show you just for reference. Talking about my guns really quickly, I have an MP7 with deadly, responsive, and predatory. Predatory actually does still self-revive you if you die within five seconds of killing a target, but at the same time, it's not its not going to proc as often because it's not a huge amount of healing. You're not healing for 14% of enemy health anymore. You're healing for 14% of your own health. That's how I understand it with the patch, so it's not great. I would prefer something else, but deadly, responsive, great for an MP7. I like the gun a lot. My secondary, I use this in all my secondaries until I get a better, you know, SOCOM m one Deadly, accurate, and prepared. Accurate should be brutal, but I use this for dead eye, so accurate is, is helpful on there. Prepared is nice. I would prefer competent, but, you know, there's a lot of different weapon talents, and you guys are going to have different weapons and different setups, so I'm not really going to harp on those too much. Now moving on to my skills uh, and my abilities. I have Pulse with Tactical Scanner. This is just for, you know, for damage output, for burst damage. It's not maxed out by any means. as 54% critical hit damage and 25.8% critical hit chance, which is nice. Gets me close to the, to the critical hit chance cap, but not, over, but not you know, capping out on it. Uh, and then I have, this is, you know, very important, booster shot on my heal. Now, despite the fact that it's doing a severely reduced amount, instead of 32,000, 19,000, that's still helpful. It's still boosted by, you know, the first aid self-heal on my gear. And something that's you know really good about this is the damage mitigation. Um, additional uh, temporarily increases damage for the affected targets in addition to the normal healing effect. But what's not listed here is that it decreases damage taken by the same amount that it's increasing damage for the you know the duration. That's about 15% as I understand it, and it's something that's going to decrease the base damage on shotguns and help you a lot. Okay, so that's something that's important for the build. Now, moving on to the talents, I actually have the most important talent is critical save. Now, I use this in every build, but it actually pairs so nicely with Hunter's Faith and with uh, Booster Shot because, you know, using a medkit at low health and actually is, I've been led to believe actually by some subscribers. So if this is true, please let me know. And if it's not, please disprove it, that this will proc with Booster Shot if you're at low health. And this will also proc with medkits and support stations. So any healing that you receive is going to trigger critical save critical save in the lower health segments. So that means if you pop booster shot and you have critical save, you don't even need to pop a med kit, but you can pop booster shot in the lower health bar, get not only the 40% mitigation from critical save, but also the 15 from booster shot. Maybe, you know, land a bullet, get that extra armor from Hunter's Faith, and you can just take chunks out of their damage, large chunks out of their damage. 
So outside of that, I use triage because I'm going to be in a team for most of this. I do some some duo gameplay, you know, coming up. I'm not in a squad of four, but triage is very you know broken in my opinion right now. So everybody should be using that. Reach low health to reduce active skill cooldowns by 20% with strike back. You can swap that out for whatever you want, but that's what I'm using. And then I use uh, one is none. It does jam the gun from time to time, but I try and go for those headshots and not consuming the bullet, especially with a very small magazine gun like the MP7. It's going to be really helpful. So now I'm going to go look at my character sheet really quickly. I'm just going to scroll through. The most important thing that I'm using for this build is critical hit chance at 20%, which is nice. It's fairly high. Uh, and then with pulse, it's going to nearly cap out. And then critical hit damage at 207%. That's fantastic. This build functions very well. You can melt players really quickly, especially with headshots, especially with pulse up. Uh, it's it's fantastic. That's why I've opted you know, to use my backpack and my mask the way that they are and not have skill power on them. The headshot damage is nothing special, but 73% is nice. You know, Paired with the high critical strike damage, crits on the head are going to be fantastic. So that's about it. I'll scroll through the rest in case anyone okay, has Okay, so any, we're going to demonstrate you know, right now look at, the differences and then I'll throw it to our organized demonstration uh, before in, I talk inside about a shotgun's the actual so you know, go ahead, play, Castro, and like shoot that. me right in the head just for maximum damage. This is with no bonuses whatsoever. So his shotgun, it's not min-maxed, but it is a good shotgun build. Uh, it does over half of my health, okay? Now that's with no bonuses whatsoever. Now I'm going to hit booster shot. We're going to see that proc. I'm going to get back up and now hit me in the head. He's going to shoot me in the head the same way. And booster shot is going to mitigate some of that damage, as you can see. So that's just one method you're going to be using, like I discussed before. Uh, and there's a lot of different ones you can draw on. So now, utilizing the four-piece hunter's faith bonus, if I back up all the way to here, or actually, you know, even from right here, uh, this is a decent range. You're going to be fighting players from this range, you know, very frequently. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop booster shot, and then I'm going to shoot him. And then you're going to see, and actually, Castro, I want you to do two rounds. After I pop booster shot and shoot you in the head, I want you to fire two rounds right at my head, and I'm going to fight, fight you during that time. So I just pop booster shot, and now shoot me in the head. And then shoot me in the head again. And then shoot me in the head again. And then, yeah, it would take him many more rounds. So it's not a perfect demonstration. You know, we're, we're lagging a little bit in how fast we do it. But as you can see, I'm doing damage to him. Uh, you know, substantial damage, and he's doing damage to me, but I'm mitigating a lot of that. So now I'm going to pop my, my med kit, and I'm going to pop booster shot. Go ahead and shoot me in the head. That does not much. Go ahead, shoot me in the head again. Boom. As you can see, it's not doing that much damage. Now, get me down to below one bar of health, Kestra. All right. So I pop the heal. <laughs> I pop good. pulse. I drop a shot on him. Now, and then I pop booster shot. Go ahead and shoot me in the head three times. As you can see, there it is. I'm mitigating huge chunks of damage. Now, if I can time these bonuses and pair them together correctly, I can mitigate tons of damage. Um, I'm procking, you know, all my different bonuses. Go ahead, shoot me in the head. Yep, go ahead, do it again. There we go. So, as you can see, uh, he finally did kill me, you know, but when you use these bonuses, so critical save with booster shot, with Hunter's Faith, there's a whole bunch of different things that are going to mitigate damage, and stacked on top of each other, you can counter the shotgun meta. Uh, it's very difficult to do. I'm not telling anyone that this is going to be your, you know, easy, you know, cookie cutter, one-shot deal, you're done, you never have to worry about shotguns, but there are methods to beat them. Uh, one thing that's, you know, very important is changing your actual play style. You know, you want to gain range. So Hunter's Faith, another thing that I can demonstrate is that the Hunter's Faith bonus stacks the farther away you are. And if you can hit a bullet from 15 meters away, you're going to gain a huge amount of armor that's going to basically make their next shot uh, not worthless, but not kill you. And for anyone with a min-max shotgun build, uh, that's going to be really important. Because you're going to save yourself that, that split second in which they would kill you right off the bat, but you're going to get that time between shots that they have. So as you can see, Castro's there. If I can land a couple shots, I now have my Hunter's Faith bonus. I'm going to climb up on top of this Humvee. I'm also going to pop booster shot, and now I want you to shoot two shots in my head. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There, as you can see, I'm tanking a ton of shotgun shots. Um, it's not perfect. That's not like how every single fight's gonna go. But using all these different methods, Hunter's Faith with booster shot, with critical save on your med kids, you're you know, you're capable of of sustaining a ton of damage. Go ahead and shoot me. See? I I'm mitigating tons of damage. Now, if I did not use these measures, if I didn't use booster shot, if I didn't use critical save, and if I didn't use Hunter's Faith, I would actually, you know, die in two shots. So go ahead and shoot me. You know, I'm just going to keep demonstrating. I can keep popping these different mitigation techniques, and it just helps a lot. Shoot me again. I can keep popping more. 
I actually have a damage reduction signature and I can tank tons of shotgun shells. So it's not perfect. I know some people are going to say, oh, well, a perfect shotgun build is still going to, you know, shred you no matter what. I guess maybe you're right, but I have found that this helps. It helps a lot. And when I use it properly, it just, it totally, totally increases my survivability by like 300% against shotgun builds. So I'm actually going to flip it over some gameplay now and uh, I'll talk over that as well. And which, in which I'll demonstrate this, you know, against other players because... Uh, one thing that's important to note is that this is, while you know, primarily a defensive build, it still has the potential to dish damage because of, you know, I'm pairing it with, <laughs> he just killed me. Uh, I'm pairing it with a marksman rifle, you know, and I do have the hunter's faith bonuses and stuff, and there's a lot of different things. So, thanks for watching, and I'll flip it over that's to the gameplay. That's what would happen. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we're on top of the library. It's just the two of us. We are going to go rogue and demonstrate how the build functions. You've seen now how it functions against shotguns, and unfortunately, I was just not able to find anyone using a shotgun for most of today while I was trying to get the footage for this build, which is really, uh, you know, it's strange. It, to me, it seems like whenever I'm looking for something and I want it to happen, it just doesn't. And whenever I don't want something to happen, it happens all the time. So I will be using this build on stream in the future, you know, to demonstrate against shotgunners when I do encounter them. So never fear, there will be more you know, instances of that. But I can show you right now that this build functions. We just broke someone's signature right through the 80% damage reduction. Uh, I do massive critical strikes. My pulse is functional. I, I'm constantly getting that green bar of armor. And that's actually going to reduce incoming damage You know, per only one bullet. So it's not like I can tank an entire uh, magazine from them with the reduced damage. But if I'm trading bullets with them, it is going to help a lot. And I am going to actually you know, reduce their damage a ton and win those fights. So I like having that, that green around my health bar. Just to me now, it's a comfort thing. Like, I, I know that if someone runs up on me and, and shoots me in the head with a shotgun, tries to get that one shot, maybe a cheap shot off, it's not going to work as well. And I like that. And I think the Hunter's Faith has really, you know, stepped up to the plate and is going to help counteract the shotgun meta. Um, there is something to note about this. There, at a certain distance, you'll see it later in the video, you can actually max out the armor cap and your whole health bar will go flat green which is really cool. And when it happens, you just feel super safe, especially from an enemy sniper or shotgunner. It's just, it's an awesome feeling. And I don't know, I've gotten used to it. E even if it doesn't really help, it's a placebo effect. It just makes me think that I'm, you know, stronger than I am. Even, you know, one bullet will take away that bonus and reduce the damage, but then it's gone. So fully automatic, you know, guns are going to counter Hunter's Faith quite well, but it just feels nice to have that green bar. I don't know what, I, what else I can say. It's just a cool feeling. Uh, as you can see, we're taking on multiple players. From, from inside my optimal range, I do massive headshot damage, you know, 9,000, 10,000. I, I think I get up to 15,000 at one point uh, with critical strikes to the head with my MP7, which means if a shotgunner is doing, you know, like Jay Castro was, uh, one bar or less than one bar of damage, if I time my mitigation correctly, that means I can deal substantial damage to them and face tank them. I can walk right up to them. I've done it before, but unfortunately it's not on camera. Uh, I can walk right up to them. And, you know, face tank their shots because it'll take them about three or four shots to kill me rather than one and then kill them well within that time frame. I think this is a great build. Uh, it's not for everyone. You know, you do have to exercise a little bit of a different gameplay, you know, mechanic. You have to be really aware of what you're doing and gaining distance is going to be your best friend. Now, unlike other builds, you don't actually have to run and keep the, the long distance, you know, keep the fight farther away from the shotgunners than their optimal range is. You can actually just gain distance for a couple seconds just to shoot them with one bullet and then move closer and then let them get closer because their next shot after that, depending on how far away you were, is going to be severely reduced. So that's going to allow you, even the time it takes with a shotgunner to land two shots, they could be dead. Uh, most shotgunners are squishy. I can talk from my own perspective. I have a one-shot shotgun build that functions very well, but only has 350,000 toughness, and I'm using Reckless. If I face tank, I have to kill them within one to two shots, and if I can't do that, I will die, especially if they have any sort of you know functional SMG or crit build or anything like that, and they start landing headshots. So if you can mitigate the damage from their first shot, make them fire a second shot, and even then, if you can survive two shots, that's plenty of time. You can, you can scope in on their head, and you can melt them. Uh, there are some shotgun builds that are absolutely perfectly perfected and can one-shot everything and will never die. I don't have one of those, and they are extremely rare. Like 0.001% of the population has those. And when you encounter one, well, that really sucks. But, you know, that's, that's probably not much you can do. But this is a great way to counter most shotgun builds. So that's why I'm advertising it. That's why I put the build, uh, build video out there. And uh, thank you to all the subscribers who've been recommending for me to do this and things like that. I have been meaning to do more counter shotgun, you know, gameplay and videos and stuff for a while, but haven't really gotten to it. Um, 
we do end up fighting these guys, you know, a, a couple more times. We pick up a manhunt. We end up running off the manhunt because there's just two of us, and I was completely out of ammo for, you know, the second half of this fight, as you can see. One thing to note, though, out there, you can see the, the green bar there. So when you're far enough away and you max out that, that armor and you get that full green bar, it's just a cool feeling. <laughs> I'm actually getting really used to this build, and I like it a lot. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but it's, it's up there. It's definitely up there. Uh, another thing is that... Uh, what was I going to say? I can do some announcements now. Um, so really quickly, uh, the t-shirt is going to happen within the next couple days. So we're definitely going to hit 10,000. Uh, another thing is people have been asking about a stream schedule. We stream every night now. I'm going to try to stream every night. Can't guarantee it will be on weekends. If I'm going to go out you know, hang out with friends, things like that, I will do it. But during the week, definitely going to be streaming most nights. And for longer and longer periods of time. We started off with one hour, then we did two, now we did three. Probably going to go for like three or four tonight. And it'll, it should be fun. So check that out. You know, keep an eye on when the live icon pops up. Um, the build, another aspect of this build that I'll talk about really quickly is that when you're out of ammo in your SMG, this is a functional sniper build. It's not 100% as effective as Deadeye, for sure, because you don't have that 100% critical hit chance, but it does land massive headshot crits. So I think there's a little bit coming up where I, I have to switch to my M1A because I'm out of ammo, and I land, I think, 59,000. Uh, for headshot crits and that can just totally destroy a player. I mean two of those and they're probably dead you know, It's about 60,000 damage 120,000 health. That's what most players are sitting at So if I can land that twice in a row, that's gonna be a, a really short uh, TTK or time to kill and you know, you're gonna melt players um, You know you can fight from far range and when you do fight from far range You are gonna get you know a larger hunters faith bonus So I as you can see if I can land shots the same at the same rate that they're landing shots I'm gonna keep getting back that armor bar and if we are actually trading one for one with SMG bullets, I will come out hands down on top. If you can trade one for one with bullets with your, with your opponent and you have Hunter's Faith, if you're you know, skilled enough to do that, you will come out on top with flying colors like every single time. And maybe not if it's a shotgun build, but even then you should have enough time to melt them down. The more, the more I even talk about Hunter's Faith, the more I start to like it. Uh, Jay Castro you know, melts people very quickly in his own way, so... Uh, half of this video is him killing people and me kind of just, you know, taking a back seat to that. Um, but, you know, the, the build is multidimensional. I, I like it a lot. You can fight from super far with your M1A. Someone that has a better M1A role with Brutal is actually going to do even better because the two-piece Hunter's Faith bonus pairs nicely with the M1A, uh, especially if you have the right talents on the gun. And then the SMG version, it does work quite well as well. You can use an assault rifle, anything like that. Any fully automatic gun works. Uh, you could also use this with a shotgun. People have been saying to do that, but I'm going to step away from shotguns for a little bit, except maybe when I'm live streaming, I'll use them. But in terms of videos, I'm not going to do more shotgun one-shot you know, montages or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to actually stick to you know off-meta things like my channel kind of was built around. And I will be doing you know very soon something with almost all high ends and just see how all those talents stack up and if you can do something interesting with it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So that's a, about enough gameplay. You can see it functions quite well. They, there is a sticky bomber there, so the armor itself does not help with sticky bombers, but me and Jay Cash are actually both running booster shot, which means almost all the time we're getting this, this bonus mitigation. Uh, and if we do get low, we're getting critical save as well because he's running the same talents I am. And as a result, you know, you can really, you can dictate the pacing of the fight, you can absorb huge amounts of damage, and you can time your, your counterattacks for when their, their abilities are down. So if they, you know, blow all their burst on us, then we have the opportunity to say, okay, they've popped their heels, they've popped their pulse, they've done all the burst damage they can, their tank titian shot the sticky bomb, we can turn on them, we're relatively safe, and now we can fight and melt them. We get into a really dicey situation here, actually, where the shock turret keeps, you know, shocking us out in the open, and they have the opportunity to dish damage. And uh, booster shot keeps us alive. Because we're both popping booster shot constantly, we're triaging each other with it, getting the bonus damage resistance, uh, it works really well. You know, we're breaking line of sight. We keep using booster shot. And despite the small amount of healing that it does, I mean, I'm out of med kits and I can still tank plenty of damage. So booster shot is a very underrated skill in my opinion. And I think that more people should be using it. That's why I'm going to make an effort to cover it more, especially with the, the vigorous chest piece, because then it functions the same way that overdose does, just maybe with a little bit reduced, you know, bulk burst healing. Uh, and it still does, you know, a lot of work. So that's about it. I don't think we've really seen the, the sniper you know, coverage yet where I got those 59,000 crits on the head. But uh, it does happen. And you know, really quickly, we do have a Twitter account now. So all the links to all our social media and stuff is going to be down in the description. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, there it was, you know, really high headshot crits, and it, it worked really well. Um, the Patreon page is a great way to support us. We're going to be upgrading equipment, doing some giveaways and stuff. Now that we're over 10,000, it's just we're official. We're, we're a real YouTube channel. I am. This is going to be full-time. Uh, and we're here to stay. So thank you to everyone who supported that already. There'll be a credit reel right after this. 
And um, you, an easy way to get onto that is to just support the Patreon page. You know, nothing will ever be required. I can't stress that enough. We will never require any sort of payment for anything at all. We'll continue to do absolutely everything that we do free of charge. But it is a great way if you do like the content to support. Other than that, just tune into the live stream. That's just as much support as well. So if you want to, uh, you know, keep track of the channel, see the new stuff, see us play, then go ahead and tune in. Eastern time between, you know, 5 and 10 or 11 o'clock at night is when the streams will normally happen. I'll try and nail down a more, you know, concrete schedule in the future. But right now that's not really happening. Uh, as you can see, I run out of ammo in all my guns. So I'm going to call the video there. Thank you again to everyone who supports. Thank you to all our subscribers. It's been great. We're about to hit 10K. I could not be more thrilled. Uh, and as always, guys, have a nice day.